God forbid if you were to know that few years down the line your house, your possessions and your family would be washed off in a flood would you not be moved to do something about it? I passed through a similar situation when there was a flood in my area where I was staying in Bangalore and our, the two basements of my apartment was completely flooded. 27 cars got submerged. Climate change. What else would have probably triggered that? And poor infrastructure of managing with the flood crisis in cities like Bangalore which is a metropolitan city. We know that every year we are hearing one or the other natural calamity which is happening. Floods, storms, cyclones, forest fires, earthquakes and hundreds of thousands of people are just dying. Last uh, in 2003 in France 20,000 people died in Europe out of which 15,000 were from France. That's the effect of global warming. I'm not an environmentalist, so I may not be able to tell you too much about how global warming is affecting our world, but I can tell you in brief that greenhouse effect, global warming, is having an impact in all the areas like air pollution, noise pollution, water pollution and affecting our world at large. To the extent though a lot of people are trying to do plant trees, a green revolution has come up where youngsters, organizations like Rotary Alliance Club is planting trees to see that we have um, forests coming up and reduce the global warming. Carbon dioxide emissions which have been happening since 1760, the industrial revolution since when it started. These carbon dioxide emissions have been one of the main reason why the global temperature is going up. Nitrogen in the waters going up because of the sewage which is being disposed in the ocean. Of late there was a pipe, waste pipe which was uh, found out in the oceans in Keys where they saw that 143 million gallons of waste disposal was happening into the ocean and if you have an aerial view of it you can see a green bubble in the area of the ocean where the sewage is being disposed because this sewage adds to the nitrogen content in the ocean usually there is a harmonious balance of oxygen, carbon and nitrogen but when the carbon even phosphorus so when the nitrogen goes up you find the waters become acidic leading to corals getting extinct. I saw a post a few days back in LinkedIn where somebody had posted about an article which came in New York Times where about a point in Florida called as Loki Reef where the waters have become so acidic that people who used to do sea diving and have grown up seeing coral reefs are almost heartbroken seeing that these co corals are almost at the verge of bleaching and dying because of the nitrogen increase in the waters. When I think of 
my childhood when I was about six years old in 1979 one evening when I came back from school I kept my bag at home in on the sofa and ran into the kitchen to pick up a few rice grains and went to the uh, balcony to feed some sparrows because I believe they are my pets I didn't have any other pets that time so I used to go and feed those sparrows and I continued my amusement as I washed those sparrows pecking those rice grains my mother asked me where are your books that's when I realized I said it must be in the bag I didn't remember when I went in and saw my mother was looking at the dragonflies flying out of my bag I had caught a lot of dragonflies, butterflies, red velvet mites and all of them and put it in the bag and tied those dragonflies by a chain by a thread and they were flying out of the bag like a string garland and my mother was uh, surprised and shocked to find them in the bag instead of my books so she asked me where are your books I said uh, I left it in the playground because I didn't know the significance of books and for me the nature, the beauty of nature was very important and very lovely. It was an amusement. Today's kids, my daughter has not been comfortable around dragonflies. And she's so scared of all kind of insects because she has not grown up in that kind of uh, environment where we gel and merge with nature. The kids of the 70s and 80s have a lot of exposure to nature, whereas especially the post-COVID generation is more to do with the screen, computers and mobiles. So we are slowly moving away from nature. It reminds me of one of my uh, situation in my life. When I was about 20 years, 19, 20 years old, <coughs> We had a lot of problems at home, like we did not have enough um, to meet the expenses of the day. My father was had taken a voluntary retirement and then his business was not, not doing well. My mother had rheumatoid arthritis, my father had a cardiac problem, my brother had an oozing eczema. All this had put us under a lot of stress and I was in a situation where I was kind of fed up with life. I just didn't want to continue anymore. <coughs> so at that point in life, I felt I should just go away from everything. Every day morning when I wake up, I listen to the temple, uh, the sounds from the temple and it used to kind of calm me down but was not satisfying enough. So at that point of time, I thought I should leave. I told my father, I'm going. Then he said, where are you going? I said, I don't know where I'm going but I'm going. He gave me 1,500 rupees. I went, I shaved off my hair, wore saffron clothes, and I thought I'll go on the spiritual pursuit. So in search of happiness, I went, and my father supported me in that journey. Though I was not in touch with them, those days we didn't have mobile phones. And when I went, I went to various temples, slept in footpaths, slept on the roads, railway stations, had food with the temple prasad, somehow managed but I never found happiness in any of those temples or any of the places that I went except that everybody used to look at me and say Swamiji mujhe kuch upadesh de do means you know, give me some advice and I was a small boy, I was 19-20 years and what upadesh can I give? <coughs> so in that situation the only thing which and I look back I find that I calm down from all that stress when I passed through Kanyakumari and I was there at the ocean at the beach when I was moving from Kanyakumari to the uh, Vivekananda rock the calmness of the sound of the waves of the ocean calmed me down today when I study about it I understand that the opiate receptors in the brain get activated 
when you gaze at the ocean. The mind is intrinsically connected with nature. Nature gazing is one way to relax and calm yourself when you are under a lot of stress. All these situations like floods and droughts have put people under immense stress. Like I told you about my flood situation at my home uh, where we could not move out from the apartment for quite some time because the entire area was flooded. Belandur in Bangalore, as you know, it's quite popular for floods. The water gets flooded. So I couldn't even drive out of the apartment. I was stranded in the apartment for almost seven days. We didn't have water, we didn't have electricity and we just managed. So even today, when I look back at it, there has been a trauma to a lot of people in that apartment. Fortunately, I have been a person gifted with amnesia. Amnesia is one defense mechanism of the body where when you are under a lot of stress, you tend to forget the things which is hurting you. That's a protective mechanism and in the process you may even forget other things. Whenever you find anybody asking you, can you just repeat that once again what you said? I don't, I didn't get what you said. There is a lack of attention. This lack of attention <coughs> is springing uh, from this kind of a stressful situation which is leading to a poor memory. In extreme cases there is dissociative amnesia where they totally dissociate from that situation. Don't even forget the event that has happened. I mean don't even remember the event that has happened. The stressful event is totally forgotten. Sometimes dissociative personality disorder where they may associate themselves with some other personality to feel like somebody else and to feel like they want to come out of that particular situation. There are a lot of psychological factors which have been contributed to the present generation as a gift of what we have been doing in the past because of the climate change which has happened due to our actions. <coughs> Anxiety, fear, panic attacks. This is another very common thing that we see nowadays in our clinics. And with this kind of situations that happen, people get into so much of stress. I had a lady who was in the apartment who was just crying. She was just crying and she didn't know what to do. Her husband was not there. Her car was totally under the water and it was a new car. They just purchased not even a month. So that loss, that financial loss, that attachment to the things which happens is one of the reasons which makes them, gets them into this kind of anx anxiety attacks, panic attacks. And then subsequent to it, even situations like depression. Did you know that air pollution is one of the factor which contributes to ADHD and autism? the minute particles in the air of the size of 2.5 micrometers is supposed to be one of the trigger for autism and ADHD, cognitive difficulties in children and behavioral problems. Today it's so common. Many times when a child comes to me, a mother says that the child is having you know, autistic features, their doctor has told them that something should be done about it, they have started some behavior therapy, child is not improving. There are some good medicines in homeopathy we have used like Beretta Carb, Calcarea Carb which has helped the children. And many children have improved. But I am not a pediatrician. I am a homeopathic doctor. And I have certain limitations while dealing with autistic kids. <coughs> I do not, I am not aware about the scales in which you can grade the children. So I need the support of somebody who can do that for me. 
So I need to integrate. So in our clinic, we have integrated certain things. We have done homeopathy, yoga, nutrition, and some other pediatric doctors do come and they have a look at the case. They grade those autistic kids. So an integrative medicine is what the world is moving towards. And all these situations that we are facing right now, day in and day out, can be dealt much better when we integrate the systems rather than you know we find today many the allopathic doctor feeling that okay my system is the best the homeopathic doctor saying that my system is the best the Ayurvedic doctor saying my system is the best this is not a time for that we have to deal with all this crisis that's happening mental issues that is happening we need to integrate the systems of medicines because even if the carbon dioxide level were to come down today, it's going to take another thousand years for the global warming to reach the temperatures of 200 years back. So, I and you will never be able to experience no global warming. Nor will our children be able to. Six or seven generations later only we are going to experience no global warming, even if the carbon dioxide goes down to zero now. So, if we have to make a change in this, <coughs> We will have to see that um, the we have to integrate different system because we cannot do at this point we cannot think about correcting the global warming. It is about how we deal with the crisis that humanity is facing because of that situation. Even adults face problems due to air pollution, like you have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. It is said to be because of the same airborne particles also contributing to certain cases. Not that that's entirely the cause, but there are several other factors. This is also one of the factors which contributes to it. <coughs> Having said this, I think we all, different people from different uh, fields, should give their perspective about how you can deal with this climate crisis and how we can deal with this mental health issues. Recently, I had a patient who came to me. This child had a um, depression problem since five years of age, almost till um, 19 years of age. This girl has been de under depression and she has been treated with various therapies and was resistant to all of it. We started homeopathic treatment with the help, with coordination with National Institute of Homeopathy. And then after eight months, the child actually is much better. Now the child is able, I mean, she's no more a child, she's become an adult. Uh, but I remember that family since very t a long time. So I've seen her growing up for several years. She is 19, 20 years now. She was not interested in anything. Now she is wanting to do odontology and all that. So right now her interest has come back in life and we have given medicines like Naxvamica, Lacasis and um, uh, Staphysagria. These are some of the homeopathic medicines we have used to help the patient come out of depression. Again, we have remedies like Ignatia and Atramur which is used in chronic depression. Atramur is common salt. And if you look at it, salt is extracted from sea. Sea is one of the main source. And sea, as I told you, has got this effect in reducing depression. So there is a connection between nature and the human mind. There's a lot more to be explored about it. And maybe we should think in that direction to see how we can help people come out of these mental health issues. Thank you. <coughs>